Hello, my name is Joel Angel. I'm a security consultant here with part two in my series on the Stuxnet worm. As you remember in part one, I demonstrated how Stuxnet could be installed, inject, and infect itself on a Siemens field PG. Today I'm going to talk to you about the use of one possible mitigation strategy which helps in preventing attacks like Stuxnet from infecting your SCADA and ICS equipment. This particular demonstration is going to focus on something within the Windows operating system called the Software Restriction Policy. The, the Software Restriction Policy, or SRP, as it is commonly referred, were settings introduced with the release of Windows XP to help protect systems from unknown and possibly dangerous code execution. The SRP provides a mechanism where only trusted code is given unrestricted access to a user's privileges. Unknown code which might contain viruses or code that conflicts with currently installed programs like Stuxnet would do to the Siemens WinCC and PCS7 infrastructure is allowed to run only in a constrained environment which is often called a sandbox where it is disallowed from accessing any security sensitive user privileges preventing it from performing acts like escalation of privilege. Software restriction policies provide administrators with a mechanism for identifying software programs running on a computer and controlling the ability of those programs to execute. SRP policies are not enabled by default in the Windows environment. These policies are enabled and configured using either the group policy management console or the local group policy editor which is what we're going to use today. A software restriction policy consists of a default rule that defines the security level under which programs can run and additional rules that also define the exceptions to that default rule. You can set the default security level either as unrestricted which then allows programs to run if the access rights of the users allow it or you can set it to disallowed which is what we're going to do today which is where a program cannot run. We're going to begin by running the local policy editor uh, from the start menu by selecting run and gpedit.msc. That will invoke our local policy editor where we can go in and actually configure specific aspects of the SRP. Now as I said by default uh, SRP is not enabled within Windows. So if we come down and look in the computer configuration under Windows settings and expand that menu, we will see the software restriction policy section under security settings and finally software restriction policies. You'll notice in the right pane that there are currently no software restriction policies defined, so I'm going to right click on software restriction policies and create a new policy. Now, in order to have this work, I need to do three very simple tasks. The first task I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the security levels and I'm going to set the default action which this policy performs. And as we're all very familiar in SCADA and industrial control, we prefer to have a least user privileges philosophy. So by default, I am going to disallow everything except those applications which are specifically granted access. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select that as the default level. It gives me a warning that I'm changing the default level and you'll notice the little check mark changes. The next thing I'm going to do is I go back up to the main SRP and I'm going to change the enforcement policy to include not just DLL files but all software files. This is a very important setting because as you recall one of the ODAs that was exploited in Stuxnet used a .lnk file to run executable code. So by selecting all software files it's going to apply this policy now to all files rather than just common DLLs. 
Now, as the way this policy currently sits, we'll go into the additional rules to give you an idea of how Microsoft creates the basic policy um, on installation of SRP. So I'm going to expand this key so you can see all of the currently selected and you'll notice that there are currently four paths which are allowed access. The system root is your Windows directory, and this is allowing everything in Windows and all of the .exx, .dx, .exe files to run. It's also allowing all of the .exe files to run within the Windows System32 directory. And the final, the fourth rule, actually allows those applications installed into your program files directory. Now since I changed the default action of SRP to disallow except those applications which are specifically granted uh, access, I'm going to need to log off and log back onto this machine to enforce this new policy. Okay, I have just logged off and logged back on. And as you recall, we have four basic rules that allow us to select those programs which would execute. Now, as it stands right now, our computer is not really functional because, for instance, all of these links, that these shortcut links that are defined on our desktop and in our quick launch bar, actually do not reside inside one of those four rules. Therefore, they're prevented from being executed. So this current rule set is, is, is a bit too restrictive, as you can see by this pop-up warning. So I'm going to start by creating uh, a new rule. We're provided the opportunity to create four different types of rules. One would be a certificate rule. Another would be a hash rule that actually looks at the hash data for a particular file. Um, you can use internet zone rules and what we're going to create is a new path rule. This will allow us to allow a path either local to the file system or on a remote or removable drive uh, the access to either run or not run. But since we have a deny by default methodology here I'm going to go in to my C drive and I'm going to grant access to the documents and settings directory. Now in general this is a bit too broad. You would not normally want the entire documents and settings directory to be granted uh, execute access um, level. And the main reason is is that temp files and temp directories are within this directory structure and sometimes they can actually contain some of the malicious code. So you would probably want to to focus down into specifically desktop, start menu, those more specific directories. But for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to select the documents and settings directory. I'm also going to create one additional rule which is specific to this Siemens field PG which grants execute access to the Siemens directory off the root drive. So again I will browse to this particular path in my file system and that happens to reside in C uh, backslash Siemens. So I will navigate here And again, the security level will be set to unrestricted. To verify that this new rule set is actually functioning accordingly, I'm going to come down here now and in the quick launch area on the screen, I'm now going to select Explorer, which will now invoke the Windows Explorer executable because we have now granted access to the uh, documents and settings, which is the directory where this particular shortcut link um, resides. Now what I like to do as far as a test is I like to copy a very common executable um, notepad.exe and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into the root directory to show you how this is preventing the particular applications from executing. I'm now going to take notepad, copy it, and then paste it in our root directory. So if I take this and select copy Go back to our root drive, root directory. Paste this application in our root.
and then try to run it, SRP should block the execution of this application because it is contained in a directory which is not allowed to have execute uh, privilege from within the uh, SRP policy that we created. And here's our, our alarm, or our alert that says that. And of course, it is also logged in the system log under your security events. So here's our six rule set. Now, let's invoke our Stuxnet worm. So I'm going to install the USB flash drive. We're going to see the uh, new drive uh, be install installed. And while that's installing, I'm going to create a command prompt window so that we can verify that those files exist. That particular drive was installed as F. And when I do a directory on F, sure enough, we're going to see our four shortcut link files and the two temp files, which is the payload of the attack. So now, to show you how SRP is going to block this, I'm going to launch the Internet Explorer, or I'm sorry, the Windows Explorer window. We're going to navigate down to Drive F, which is where the worm currently resides. And as you recall from part one of this video series, you would see those temp files immediately disappear. But now, SRP is going to block the LNK files from executing and you're going to see those six files and they're going to stay because SRP has prevented them from executing. Now one thing that is worth pointing out is that you recall when we ran Notepad or when we ran our shortcut links prior to granting access to documents and settings we did receive a pop-up window. We are not receiving a pop-up window here but SRP is in fact preventing these particular uh, executable code snippets from running, which has effectively blocked Stuxnet from infecting itself on this Siemens Field PG workstation. Thank you for attending, and as usual, if you would like to find additional information, please visit some of the many references online, including the very detailed evaluation report from Symantec. Thank you.